Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Ambient Occlusion Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and Ambient Occlusion. If you don't know, it's a, uh, it's a lighting caused when a scene is surrounded kind of by a uniform diffused spherical light source. And what ambient occlusion does is it helps lighting out in the 3D world. So basically we have our lights and they're lighting up our objects and our shapes and our little world, but they're really not lighting correctly. Meaning it's not taking into account other shapes and other things that are going on with the lighting in the world like it does in the real world. So to kind of demonstrate this, let's let's go ahead and build something first so we can see what we're doing and then we'll jump into the ambient occlusion node. So uh, let's take our shape and uh, let's make this pretty thick. So let's first disconnect this and I'm going to grab a separate 3D merge and input it. And, uh, let's go ahead and replicate this a whole bunch of times. So let's bring in another shape and let's just see what we're doing here. Transform it to minus four and we're going to go to our controls and uh, we're going to make it pretty wide, pretty high to cover it all. And, uh, let's throw a transform 3D. After our, whoop, I don't know what you're doing there. After our little merge, so we can transform all this. So let's see what's going on. So rotate it here. And you can see we're uh, off access. So let's fix that. Let's go here on our transform node. Take our pivot to uh, minus four. So now we're in the middle. Rotate that on the Y so we can see where our plane is. All right, and uh, let's go to our original shape and let's get rid of that rotation. And let's bring our plane back a little bit. All right, so let's get some material on here so we can uh, kind of see what's happening. And I'm going to bring in a diffuse material. And let's just bring in a, uh, let's see, bong. We're gonna bring this into our diffuse. And let's bring in a bump, map, Let's input that into our bump map material. And somebody had a question the other day in our little community about reversing the, the normals on a normal map. The, unfortunately, you, you can't. There's no option to do that. So even if we bring in our little normal, let's look at our normal here. That is a normal map. We don't have an option to flip it and we can't use the uh, the replace normals node that we have in Fusion. That's just for 3D objects. If you notice, we can't bring that in at all. And also we can't put this after the bump. It doesn't work that way. But you can, there's a workaround. So let's just input that. And let's put this into our shape so we can uh, see what's going on. We can bring in an invert node. So let's go to our bump and uh, actually do it correctly. And let's bring in an invert color node. And what we can do is on this invert color node, make sure you uncheck blue. You don't want your blue checked. And then from there, it's just kind of by taste. And it's not necessarily actually reversing our little uh, normal map here, 
but you can mess with the color. So if I input this, or that's my bump map. If I turn this on and turn it off, you can see it's flipping our normals and it's not doing it like mathematically correct. It's just flipping those colors and I can uh, uncheck my green and get a different look as well or uncheck my red and only check my green and get a different look. So you can flip those around using that invert node, but it's not correctly inverting your normals on this normal map just so you know. So let's get rid of that. Let's turn our bump back on and uh, let's go to our render view. And let's take our shape and input it into a replicate 3D. So this is our source and this is our uh, little shape. Let's input that there. Let's, let's dial in this uh, replicate 3D. So we'll leave the steps there. We'll just go to jitter and we're going to offset on X. We're going to offset on the Y and the Z. So we get a little bit of depth going on. And that's, uh, we won't rotate them. Let's fix some of those uh, spaces. And what we can do is we can go to our shape and we can actually change our width. So we can change that. So there we go. Now we've got a whole bunch of squares, uh, a whole bunch of cubes in our uh, little scene there. But if you see, this lighting isn't that great. So if I take our spotlight, I can move it around and try to change my lighting up, but it just doesn't look that great. It's a little flat and uh, not exciting, but this is where your ambient occlusion comes in. So let's go ahead and bring in an ambient occlusion. We're going to add that. Now, a few things before we add this. One, we want to go to our render node and we want to make sure we have our Z and our normal channels checked because uh, this node needs the Z and the normals to be able to operate correctly. Additionally, this node has to go after your render node. So this is kind of a post effect after your render that's uh, happening here. So let's go ahead and input it. We're going to get an error because we also need a camera. And your other node here is just an effect mask. So if you want to mask all that mask off that effect, like we do any other node, you can use this, but this is our camera input. You don't need a new camera input. We can use our existing camera and just input it into our occlusion. So let's look at what's happening now. So up top of our ambient occlusion, you have two output modes. One is the AO and one is color. So within your AO mode, you can see how these shadows in your depth is kind of working on your AO. So down here we have kernel type and we have hemisphere, hemisphere and sphere. And normally you just want to work on, on the hemisphere level. So what that's doing is just casting light from a hemisphere over your entire uh, scene. In your sphere, if you're having issues or you want a different look, go ahead and use sphere because this will give you a different look. But we're going to leave it on hemisphere because it's going to be the most accurate. Now your number of samples is your sampling of uh, that AO. You can see it's uh, changing. I'm going to move this over to make sure you're seeing it all. So the higher samples, the better. Your kernel radius is going to dictate how that light is affecting your uh, objects. So as you see, if I start lowering that kernel radius, it's going to fill in some of those shadows more. And if I raise it, it's going to alter it. So we're just trying to find a look that we kind of want. And uh, kind of like that look. And 
Down here we have lift and gamma, and it's exactly that. Just like in any other color node, we, we can lift it, or lower it, and we can change our gamma. In here we can change the uh, tint of our AO, and we can change the red, the green, the blue individually. And down here, this is for if we're using a stereo mode. In your camera selection, if you have multiple cameras, you can select which camera is connected. Now to really see what's happening with our image here, we would just want to switch to color mode. And these aren't changing depending on what mode. All these are going to stay the same. This is just what we're viewing it on, whether it's the AO or our actual color image that's being output. So when you're on this level, we can come in here and we can fine tune some of the look on here. And work with our gamma. We can change the number of samples if we need to. We can lift it or lower it. If we need to work on the hemisphere or the sphere instead of the hemisphere, we can do that as well. And change our kernel radius to get the look we're looking for. And again, play with our gamma to change our look. So you can see this is affecting our light and giving it a lot more depth and a lot more realistic shadows than just our lighting nodes. Now, additionally, with this ambient occlusion, let me switch it back to a hemisphere. We can compound it. So I can have multiple ambient occlusions to affect the look I want. So we can copy this, let's paste it. We can bring our camera back in, bring our camera back in. And now if I look at this ambient occlusion, we're getting even more depth detail. And if I want to combine from the sphere to the hemisphere, I can. We can change up our gamma. And uh, we can go here and do cool stuff like uh, animate on our Y. So we can see that light interacting with all of our uh, cool little shapes. So that is the ambient occlusion node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.